Hello, this is Jonathan from Robotics, and today I'll be talking about some of the advanced features supported by Dynamixel actuators. Dynamixel actuators support a wide variety of features related to motion control and monitoring. However, you might not know that they also support a few select features that can help you level up your use of Dynamixel actuators. In this video, I'll go over a collection of these features and provide a quick explanation of each, as well as how to use it. The video description has a full list of all the items I'll be talking about today. So if there's anything that catches your eyes, feel free to skip straight to that section. If any of the explanations here leave you wanting more information about these features, be sure to check out the links to the control table items in the video description, or leave a comment down below asking for a follow-up video on a particular feature. So without further ado, let's jump into the descriptions. Status return level is the simplest option we'll be covering in this video today. This setting determines Dynamixel's response policy for received instruction packets. By default, Dynamixels have a status return level of 2, meaning they will send a response packet to any received instruction. Setting this to 1 changes the behavior so that Dynamixels will only respond to ping and read packets, while setting it to 0 will have the Dynamixel only respond to ping packets. While adjusting this option may not seem particularly useful at first, adjusting the status return level to eliminate unnecessary replies can increase the reliability of communication with Dynamixel servos when there are high volume of communications going over the serial bus. The drive mode control table item is actually a collection of several related settings into a single register and governs the following control table features. Torque on by goal update, profile configuration, dual joint mode, and normal reverse mode. Each of these settings also warrants a little explanation on its own, starting with torque on by goal update. This setting determines if the Dynamix tool will automatically enable movement torque whenever it receives a movement command. By default, this is disabled meaning if a goal position command is sent to a Dynamixel with its torque disabled, the servo won't actually execute the instruction. With this setting enabled, if a goal command is received, torque will automatically be enabled and the Dynamixel will proceed to execute the command. In many cases, enabling torque on by goal update can make working with Dynamixels a little bit easier, as it means you won't accidentally miss any commands sent if you disable the actuator torque. However, it's important to consider that this may result in sudden movements from actuators that were previously unpowered meaning that enabling this option may not be suitable in safety critical applications. The second option in this group is movement profile configuration. This option toggles between velocity-based and time-based movement profiles. In the default velocity-based communication, the profile velocity and profile acceleration settings determine the absolute maximum movement velocity and maximum rate of acceleration during movement, respectively. Time-based profiles instead use profile velocity to set the duration of a profile step and profile acceleration to set the amount of time within that step that is used for acceleration and deceleration. For most use cases, default velocity mode is recommended. The next option, dual joint mode, is only available in 540 size servos. This setting is used in conjunction with the 540 servo size dual joint cable to determine which of the servos is the leader or follower in a dual joint system. Default value of one sets the servo as the leader while changing this to zero sets the servo as the follower. The final drive mode option is normal reverse mode, a simple option allowing you to invert the motion and position of Dynamixel actuators. Ordinarily, positive goal values cause Dynamixel actuators to turn counterclockwise, and negative goal values cause clockwise movement. Toggling on reverse mode switches this behavior for both velocity and position-based movement. This is useful when implementing dual joint mechanisms utilizing multiple Dynamixels, as well as for constructing symmetrical robots or other similar situations where mirroring Dynamixel motion is required, such as differential drives. The startup configuration setting allows users to adjust a few important startup behaviors of their Dynamixel actuators, specifically the enabling or disabling of two useful features, automatic restoration of a portion of the RAM section of the Dynamix control table and the automatic enabling of torque on the actuator startup. Automatic RAM restoration is enabled by default and allows the Dynamixel to save and restore velocity gains, position gains, speed forward gains, profile acceleration, profile velocity, and indirect address locations for all Dynamixels except for the P-Series to allow these control table items to persist through reboots. The second setting is disabled by default, meaning that torque is off by default when a Dynamixel boots. For most applications, changing this to on can help ensure the stability of your robotic platforms. But in safety critical situations or cobots, it may be beneficial to leave this setting disabled in order to prevent any unexpected movements during Dynamixel power off. 
The shutdown conditions control table item is an important area to be aware of for advanced dynamic slew usage. By default, when a dynamic slew actuator detects a fault condition, it will automatically disable torque to prevent damage to the unit and must be fully reset in order to restore functionality. This setting allows you to specify which dynamics or fault conditions will disable torque to the motor or not. The available faults to select from are overload, electrical fault, motor encoder fault, overheating, and over voltage. By default, everything except a motor encoder fault will trigger a shutdown. I'll quickly go over exactly what each of these fault conditions correspond to and why you might want to disable them for specific applications. I'll start with the simplest fault condition, an overload or stall. This occurs when the servo is unable to complete a motion due to an obstruction or to too much load in the output. When the servo detects it's been putting lots of effort into a motion but isn't moving, it'll trigger overload status to prevent the motor from overheating or otherwise damaging itself. Generally, you want to keep this setting enabled to prevent motor damage. However, in situations where your mechanism may experience infrequent obstructions that are automatically cleared after a little bit, it might be useful to disable this protection to prevent unnecessary shutdowns prior to the removal of the obstruction. The electrical fault stall condition covers two separate electrical conditions, internal short circuits and insufficient operating current. The short circuit protection is important enough that you'll almost never want to disable the setting. But if your robot is designed to operate with very low power constraints, then it may make sense to disable this fault condition to prevent frequent low current errors. Motor encoder faults are the only setting in this group to be disabled by default as well as the one least likely to be seen in normal circumstances. Encoder errors generally only occur as a result of damage to the incremental encoder or after the servo has been in use for a significant time and has experienced a high amount of component wear. If you have an older dynamical servo that keeps producing strange or inaccurate movements, you might want to consider enabling shutdown on motor encoder error in order to prevent erratic motion resulting from these encoder issues. By default, Dynamixels trigger the overheating shutdown condition when the internal temperature sensor reads over 100 degrees Celsius. While this default 100 degree limit can be adjusted to a lower value through the temperature limit control table item, it can't be increased from the default in order to protect against damage to the internal electronics. However, if you do need to operate your Dynamixels in extreme temperature conditions, disabling the overheat fault will allow your servos to continue to operate at temperatures above 100 degrees Celsius. The final fault status covered by these shutdown conditions is the overvoltage fault. Providing too high of an input voltage to your dynamical servos is likely to cause damage to the internal electrical components. So by default, all dynamics actuators report this fault provided an input voltage outside the rated specification. However, if your application results in infrequent short spikes of current that are slightly above the rated voltage, it may make sense to disable the shutdown condition to prevent unnecessary shutdowns. The bus watchdog feature allows users to monitor the connection status of their dynamic cell actuator. This setting, which is disabled by default, allows the specification of a time duration in increments of 20 milliseconds. After the specified time elapses, if no communication packets are received, the dynamic cell will stop all motion and the bus watchdog value will be set to negative one. In this state, goal writing control table items will be set to read only to prevent unexpected movement resulting from the sudden reestablishment of communications. Once this error has been triggered, in order to resume the normal operation of your Dynamixel, bus watchdog control table item must be set to zero to manually clear the error, after which you can resume writing to the goal values and reset the timeout setting for the bus watchdog. Control table backup and restore features allow you to persist Dynamixel settings across reboots and resets of your actuators. In order to properly utilize this feature, you'll need to send a control table backup packet to your Dynamixel using your preferred control solution. Then, the backup ready control table item will change to 1, indicating that there's an available control table backup ready to be restored. The entire EEPROM area, as well as the following RAM registers, are contained within the safe backup. Velocity gains, position gain, feed forward gains, profile acceleration, profile velocity, and indirect addresses for every dynamic tool except for P-series actuators. In order to restore these safe values, you need to send a control table restore packet from your dynamic tool controller. However, keep in mind that the Dynamics will re reboot when it receives a control table restore packet, so ensure that the actuators are in a safe position before restoring from a backup. External ports are an advanced Dynamics feature limited to X540 and Dynamics P series actuators, allowing the connection of external I.O. devices directly to the servos. 
These ports support the following mode of operation. Analog input, converted to a 12-bit value, readable directly through the Dynamics control table. 3.3 volt digital output, controlled by writing to the Dynamics control table. Digital input in pull-up mode, where a floating signal is considered to be positive. And digital input pull-down mode, where a floating signal is considered to be negative. The external ports make it possible to directly control external digital and monitor external analog devices directly through the Dynamics control table. Indirect addresses are a convenient way to alter the layout of a Dynamics control table to better fit the needs of your application. To utilize this feature, a range of indirect address items need to be set to cover the range of the control table item that you wish to assign to them. For example, to assign goal position to indirect address 2, we need to assign the following indirect address fields. Indirect address 2 to 116, indirect address 3 to 117, indirect address 4 to 118, and indirect address 5 to 119, which covers the entire 4-byte range of the goal position value. Then, when I read and write to the indirect data 2 field, I can actually access the goal position control table register. This feature is extremely useful for more complicated Dynamixel projects, making extensive use of sync read and sync write Dynamixel packets, as it allows you to allocate custom regions of contiguous memory addresses to simplify complex read and write operations. That's everything that you need to know about the advanced features of the Dynamixel control table. For more information on these features, as well as any other technical information about any of Robotica's products, check out our online e-manual for more information. Documentation on all of our many open source projects and libraries can also be found on the official Robotics GitHub repository. And if you'd like to chat with other Dynamixel users or want to show off some of your Robotics projects, stop by and say hi in the official Robotics community forum. This has been Jonathan with Robotics, and I look forward to building more with you soon.